uh, it's preparing to live stream the meeting. Yes. Yeah, I'm admitting all. Yeah. Sure. So we are live now. Yeah. Yes. If you could, Jara Jara lock in correction, please mute Korean in Niger. Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Yeah. Hello. 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 The participants who have joined in, please mute yourselves. Uh, uh, please mute yourself. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, good evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome to this evening's celebration of the birth centenary of uh, the legendary maestro, Shottujit Roy, uh, the, the lecture, Elephant and the Blind Man. And it's a privilege, it's a huge privilege and honor to have uh, one of the few people, one of the few major actors remaining today with the direct first-hand experience of working with Satyajit Ray. Um, we in the Victoria Memorial Hall has uh, had a very close relationship with Shottujit Rai. Uh, he visited the Victoria Memorial several times. He came to the Memorial Archives to do research for his film Shatranj Ke Khilari, which was released in 1977. He came in 1975-76 and he found uh, quite a bit of material which was used in that film. Uh, in, in the uh, recent years, we have done two major exhibitions on photographs of Shottujit Rai. Uh, in 2016, we did a, an exhibition called Ray and the City featuring the photographer, uh, the photographs of the well-known photographer, now late uh, Sunil Dutt. And then again in 2018, uh, we did another major exhibition with the photographs of Shottujit Rai at work by the legendary and the late photographer Nimai Ghosh, uh, which was inaugurated by uh, perhaps the greatest of the actors uh, who, who worked with Shatujit Rai, Shomitra Chatterjee. And just like the late Shomitra Chatterjee agreed right away when we requested him to come and inaugurate. Uh, similarly, Dr. Mohan Agashi was a very, very busy man, but when we approached him to speak on Ray on the occasion of his birth centenary. Uh, he readily agreed. Uh, we, we didn't have to request him for a second time. So it's a huge, huge honor. And we are, we are greatly honored to have you with us, Dr. Agarshe. Uh, and that's all I have to say. Uh, we are all looking forward to a fascinating session tonight when Dr. Agashi will recall his experience of working on the sets of Shottujit Rai's Sadgati and also his, his connections with Ray as it developed over the years. So before we begin, uh, I would request my colleague Raju Raman to please introduce Dr. Agashi. Raju, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jointo. Uh, all of you just heard uh, Dr. Jointo Sengupto, Secretary and Curator of Victoria Memorial Hall, welcoming all of you. Uh, it is my honor to introduce Dr. Mohan Agashi, the speaker for this evening. Uh, I will do the introduction in two parts. You know, first the formal part and then the informal part. The formal part also consists of two parts. One is a very, very long biodata, which I'm discarding for the purpose of this uh, evening. And then there is a shorter biodata. So Dr. Mohan Agashe, in addition to being a psychiatrist and director professor 
of Maharashtra Institute of Mental Health from 1991 to 97 and 2002 to 2005, has been acknowledged as one of the finest actors on the stage and screen. Beginning with an acting tour de force as the Mashivillian Nana Fadnis in Te Vijay Tendulkar's internationally acclaimed play, Ghashiram Kotwal, Agashe went on to great heights in a succession of plays and award-winning films by masters like Satyajit Rai, Meera Nair, Sham Benegal, Gautam Ghosh, and Jabbar Patel. He has been the recipient of prestigious Bundesverdienstkreuz, the cross of the order of the merit from the president of the Federal Republic of Germany in the year 2002, and Sangeet Natak Academy Award for theater, which is the highest national honor in the arts in the year 1996. He was conferred the Padma Shri by president of India in 1990. In 1997, Dr. Agashe, was invited to occupy the chair of director of the Film and Television Institute of India, Pune, where he continued till April 2002. Now, so much for the uh, formal part of the introduction. As for the informal part of the introduction, I would like to say that I have had the privilege of meeting Mohan Agashe for the first time in the year 1978. And that was a very uh, kind of uh, a memorable occasion because I was with the Goethe Institute, Max Pulavavan, Kolkata, and we were doing a month long series of events for Brecht 80, Bartolt Brecht 80. And we had invited the Theater Academy from Pune to stage the Three Penny Opera in the version which had become already very successful in that part of the country. And Mohan Agashe had come with that group. So our acquaintance and friendship started in that year. They did two shows on the 21st and 22nd of September, 1978, followed by a show of Mahanirvan at the Maharashtra Nivas over here. And of course, Mohan in his typical fashion after coming here, for him, everything is so easy. He came and said, can't you organize a show of Ghasiram Kotwal? Because we are all here. All the characters who play Ghasiram Kotwal are here. So, Everything was set into motion and Mr. Shamanan Jalan, the late Mr. Shamanan Jalan also used all his influence. And we managed to squeeze in a performance of Ghasiram Kotwal at three o'clock in the afternoon in Vidya Mandir, which was packed and overflowing out onto the streets. And, and that was a great experience for all of us. But what was in store was an even greater experience because after doing all their shows here, when they wanted to go back to Pune and went to Howrah station, that was the night there was the deluge here on the night of 26th of September when Calcutta was inundated and nobody could get away from here. So the entire team of 60 people from Theatre Academy had to come back from the railway station in a truck and come back to Maharashtra Nivas and spend a few days more before they could get away. So in that sense, it was a memorable, memorable year and occasion. So with this formal and informal introduction behind us, I would like to hand over the microphone now to Mohan Agashe for Elephant and the Blind Man, which is the title of this evening's lecture chosen by Mohan Agashe himself. Mohan, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much for this introduction, but I must say, because of my poor English, somebody had suggested a correction called Elephant and the Blind Man and not the elephant. So anyway, it's elephant and the blind man. And the reason for this title is, I think I came in contact with Manegda so late in his career and also my mid career. Though one knew him from way back because of his films and because I'm from Pune, and then they used to come to Pune. Manik had come to Pune uh, to the Film Institute and because of his films we knew him. But my real chance to meet Manikda was this Ghashiram Kotwal performance which uh, Raju just said. So I went to Manikda requesting him 
that he should please come and see our performance. And Manikda, as he was, was very straightforward, honest, and polite at the same time, saying, I'm sorry, Mohan, but I'm working on the background score of my film. And when I'm working on my film, I don't go anywhere. <laughs> so I was pretty disappointed. When Jabbar arrived, with Jabbar, we went again. And we assured, we requested him again that, look, we have come all the way from Pune. Not only for the Marathi speaking people in Kolkata to see Dhashiram Kotwal, but we want the theater people. And Shambhuda had given a special request letter to us. So even if you come for five minutes, and if you don't like and you leave, no questions asked, but we will be able to say at least the Manik that had come. So finding it difficult to say no, to uh, it's almost like begging. Mo Mohan, I'm interrupting for a second. Some people are writing on the chat that the audio is not very clear. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, maybe you should speak up or get your microphone closer. Uh, can you hear me better now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can hear you better. But, yeah? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and so he did come. And we were happy. We didn't say anything. Not only he saw the entire performance, he stayed an hour after that, meeting the entire cast and crew, and then told Jabbar, so I didn't know what I was missing. And the reason to say this, that was first time I actually had personal encounter with him. And when we went to America in 86, he voluntarily himself gave me a coat to be put on poster of Ghashiram Kotwal. Now the second funny part of it is, the name of the play was Ghashiram Kotwal. And the name of, a, I mean, in this story, a Premchand is Ghashiram. So I don't know exactly what prompted him to ask me to play that role. But maybe this association of Ghashiram Kotwal, me playing Ghashiram Kotwal, and me playing Ghashiram in Shodgati. <laughs> That's the funny, but maybe. And he asked me, so that was the time I met him. I wanted to act in uh, Shatranj Ke Khiladi because that was his first Hindi film. And I knew somebody who worked with him in that film, Shama Saidi, who was doing the dialogues. And I knew Shama because of Sham Benegal and I had worked in uh, Nishan. But that casting was already done. It was Farooq Sheikh and Shabana. So <laughs> I had no chance at all. Surprisingly, 81, after we returned from our first tour of America, I came down with serious problem of cervical, not spondylosis, radiculitis. I lost power in my right arm. I couldn't lift a bag, severe pain, hospitalized for a month, came out. And what do I see? A simple letter. Simple letter, one page letter, curious to know from whom. And it was letter from Manikda. And if I could request to show that letter, the reason by the time they are able to show, this was the first letter which I got from Manikda on 7th July, as you can see. And it says, as you can see, uh, you are grieved to learn that you are in the hospital with spinal complaint. I do hope you have fully recovered by now. And this is to inquiry. I would be very happy if you could play one of the two leading parts in Hindi film, Premton story. Please let me have your reaction as soon as possible for Durdarshan. This was the contact to which I promptly replied to assure him 
that he should not have grudge that I'm ill and I may not be able to act. And my reply to that was, as you can see my reply, no, the next letter, my letter. That's it. See how poor that typewriter and everything. I was so ashamed later, but I only assured him that I'm recovered and there is no problem. So I accept this offer and there's no question of payment. So promptly, I got a second letter from him. And uh, can we have the second letter? Nineteenth of July. So this was kind of an agreement that we were doing this film together. And at the end, you see his uh, greetings with greetings from one cervical collar man to another. <laughs> because Manek also had the problem of cervical spondylosis by then. <laughs> so that was done. The reason to show these letters are, these are two letters of July 81. And once we agreed, in August, I got two letters also from him giving me the details. And if you see, Manekda has migrated from a typewriter letter on his small letterhead to personal handwritten letter by Manekda, 15th of August following. What does this show? Shows the change of relationship from formal to informal and we were all together. That's it. This does not happen now. My recent film, I got an inquiry through somebody else and in order to make the acceptance or not, I asked and they sent me a 20 page contract. So see the difference between working with Manekda in 81 to somebody in the film industry in 2021, 20 page contract and the contract almost reads like a slavery contract from early American days when they hired slaves from Africa and India. And see this humanistic letter from Manekda that's where, and I agree. Now, he was making a telefilm, short 50 minute film. But the approach, humility, genuine, was like somebody who is making his first film. By then, Manekda was already treated as one of the world masters of cinema. He was doing a telefilm. But the way he was working on the film, which we really saw firsthand after arriving in Raipur for the shooting, was amazing because both Om and me, we shared a room and we thought He's working as if he's working on his first film, first diploma film in a film institute. Such detailing, such detailing about everything. I was amazed. I have seen people after making one or two films thinking of television film like Baye Hath Ka Khel Hai. Never. Looking at Manekda, the way he was, and I'll tell step by step, amazing. That's what made him what he was. The reason for my title is I did only one film of 50 minute telefilm, spent only 14 days with him. Whereas I know. There are so many Bengali actors and technicians who have spent much more time with him, 
have done many more films with him. Probably have talked to him Bengali, uh, which brings people much closer to also. So they probably know much larger part of what this man Manikda, like an elephant, was. And what I am telling you is probably very little from my personal experience of those fourteen days and the subsequent relationship we developed after that film. So probably I'm that one little blind man who could see only a part of this man. And I'm telling everyone, you know, this is how Manikda was. But I'm fully aware he was much, much more than what probably I will say. But one thing is sure, what I'm saying today is from my personal experience and not from my personal information about Manikda. There is a great difference between talking about something from the information you collect nowadays from Google. That day you collected it from other person. And then talking about a person from your own personal experience. And I'm talking about my own personal experience. So this is how it began from watching my play. I was so amazed by this simple letter and frankly admitting right at the beginning, say, this is a telefilm, a small film. I may not be able to pay you much. And both Om and me, we replied to him. There is no, I mean, Saval Uttahi nahi hai. Probably there are people and good actors willing to pay you so that you should cast them. And here we have this opportunity unasked for. And that too with such humility. So we were not there. The next thing was, he said that you will get your script, which we did. But both Om and me received on 31st of August, our railway tickets from Mumbai to Raipur on Bombay Howrah Express by registered mail post at our residence from somebody in Mumbai. My God, I mean, amazing these days with a lot of more facilities for communication, everything. We sometimes do not get our tickets a day before we have to go for shooting. Anyway, so me and Om, we boarded the train. We knew each other from before. And so also we knew Smita and uh, Siddharth Kak's wife also who was going to play in it. So all four of us knew each other. We came, both of us expressing what kind of experience we are going to have. And as the train approached Raipur, Om and me uh, both agreed that, look, we know Manikda, but we don't know anybody else from his team. So it may be difficult for us to find out who has come to receive us. So why not we stand in the door so that somebody who has come to receive us will see us and he would know us, particularly home by then. And so both of us stood as the train slowed down into Raipur. Indian platforms are full of people. Our population can be imagined from the platform population. Right? But what we see from all that crowd, suddenly there was one head coming up of all. And we saw Manikda. And both of us was, my God, he's come to receive us here. Or he has come for something else. We got off, we came to Manikda. And he was happy to see us. Right? I said. And we said, Manikda, you didn't have to come to station. We would have come. And he said, no, 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 no. You are my actors. I have to come. 
back we go to the hotel and the first thing he does is calls me and Om to his room with his sketchbook to make sure our look for the film which was to start next day. Costume, trial, everything arranged like nothing. Completely thought our sketches drawn, whether moustache should be there, no moustache, trimming of whatever it was, had to be done. Only after that we were allowed to go to our room and next day morning we were supposed to meet at 7 to go for the shoot. This was amazing. I'm not, I've rarely seen this happening. His red book is well known to everybody who has shot with him. Khata Bolte. And in that Khata, what I saw, the script written five or six times, one, location-wise, two, day and night-wise, evening scene-wise, three, as per the major cast, so six times script written in various ways because that time there were no computers, no scheduling, nothing at all. So he had worked out all details what to shoot. All days of shooting, it was like an office, going on time, coming back on time. We had to leave at seven. Om and me were sharing a room. And both like uh, good Sardar is up pehle, up pehle. <laughs> when it came to getting ready, I said, Om, you first go to the house, I will do it later. He said, Om, you do it later, I will do it later. So he said, we have to go to the house. So we are late by 10 minutes. What we see as we are climbing down the stairs, on a sofa, Manekda with body, Vijayadi, sitting there with his arm like this. He looked at us coming down the stairs, a smile on his face. And the only thing next we noticed was he just looked at his watch, said nothing, and asked, smiling again, Shall we go? You can imagine. Om and me, we were so embarrassed and we made a point on that day that Om, from tomorrow onwards, look, whatever it is, we have to be here before Manekda. Next day, there was a competition who finishes quickly. Both of us did. We were down exactly on the same seats where he was the previous day, waiting for him. Five to seven sharp, Manekda was climbing down the stairs. He looked at us, smiled, and what does he say? Oh, am I late? <laughs> we smiled each other and off we went. At shooting. If you knew his style of working, or it takes some time. There was no need to ask him any question because all questions were already answered, replied in that red khata. His book. And the book was kept centrally accessible to everyone so that we could do that. Third important thing we noticed, since he had done the storyboard, which rarely people do, especially after that when I've done, uh, nowadays, even the Hindi film industry, they're much more organized. There are bound scripts and sometimes even the storyboard. But my time in 93, 94, when I was doing film, I would get ready and wait for the scene to arrive because the writer was writing the scene then, fresh from oven. That's the style. So here it was everything so well planned. Kya karna hai? 
minimum suggestions. Manekda, first of all, I think while casting only, he must have taken care. Never a direct suggestion as such to change in it. He would see what are you doing. He would notice what are your strong points. And accordingly, he would design the shots of the scene. That's what I have seen. Very good. And later I'm coming to that about two scenes. Just to elaborate my point, that one didn't have to be a great actor if we are working with Manekda. He can convert an average actor into a great actor because he knew his business and that is filmmaking. But I'll come to that later. So this planning was so neat and time bound. Not even once I heard him raising his voice for a performance of an actor. Neither me, even if we made a blunder, me, Om, Smita, of course, he was treating everybody with great affection, but no doubt Smita was his favorite. <laughs> and she too. She kept on photographing him all the time when he was shooting. And they had a nice rapport and everything. But not even once he raised his voice. He would always find out an excuse for something else. Uh, are, are, how did that? Um, shall we do it again? I think that thing was not right there. Correct. You would never say that you have to improve your performance. It took us some time to realize if the shot was repeated, it was because of me or because of the performance and not. And then he had trained Punuda as a bouncing wall. If at all he had to get upset, Punuda, one of gem persons I love, very caring for everyone. But Manegda, if at all he had to raise his voice, it was always Puno. And later, we knew that. So actually, it was not fault of Puno also. The entire shooting was in a very relaxed manner, no tension. What I observed, especially after that, when I made films, acted in films, what are the things which I tried to notice in other films after doing Manikdas film? How cleverly he would design his shots, his angles, his duration, short division, and how he would put it depending upon what is required from the actor if actor would be able to give, there was no problem. But if he had thought there may be, he would design the scene in a different manner. Another important thing is to take scripts based on Tagore and Premchan in itself shows the caliber of a person. I know these days people take their scripts but what they do of it sorry to say is unbearable to watch thinking that. So he knew exactly what. Otherwise he wouldn't touch that. And all his films which I've seen this is very clean that he has added to the literary value of that literature. And that value was audio-visual literacy. I think it's very important. The reason I don't only say it, 
a person like Martin Scorsese, when he watched Apu Triology, he has put it in black and white that we had seen Indians and India in films till we saw Raktidis Ray's films. But that was a colonial perspective of India where the main characters, the forefront characters were Europeans or Americans and the background characters were India. And it was shot probably anywhere, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Bengal, anywhere. <clears throat> but what appeared was that the India was the backdrop was, it was Manik the first time who put the Indian character and culture in the forefront and people got perspective of what Indian viewpoint is and his mastery over the medium of showing the dignity. The difference which I pursued myself is when he had done Pathar Panchali and years later when I've seen Slumdog Millionaire what is the major difference? And it's so heartwarming and so compassionate of Manikda. His characters very poor, the way they lived came with dignity. Dignity of life is all what you see in Pathir Panchali and the rest of Apu, two films, Apu Sansar. The thing which is missing in most of the films made by Westerners even about India is that dignity in poverty and that he captured not only through words or his dialogue but the way he captured it through image and sound. There are many people who know many languages like Ravi Gupta, my good friend, uh, who also had interacted very closely with Manekda. And he has really appreciated Manekda. Probably, I don't know how many people know, because Ravi Gupta through NFDC was involved in financing a film, Manekda's film. And after finishing the film, what Ravi Gupta and NFDC receives is the check of unspent amount, sanctioned amount, but unspent. Ravi has said in his span of NFDC career, he has not seen anybody returning the sanctioned amount. And he returned it with a small note that I don't require this money because I have managed it in the money which you have sanctioned much before that. So I'm returning here with the unspent amount. So Ravi Gupta has said that. <coughs> and uh, so I was making that point, the, the dignity with which he has seen. That Ravi Gupta knows French, German, Bengali, Punjabi, Marathi. Manekda knew, of course, Bengali, Swali knew that, English, of course, but he knew two languages where rarely people trade in, and that's the language of image and sound, and that's the language of cinema. And when we will go on the scene, I'll show you that. Three languages. This is not the occasion to talk about migration from oral tradition to written tradition 
to digital tradition, but if Manekda was in digital tradition, things would have been very different. But he used only minimal dialogues because the rest is images and music, particularly background music. You never know when the background music begins in his film. Sometimes you have to go back to find out where the music has started. He is the one who understood that. And the last thing which I would like to tell, we finished the film in 14 days. This time he didn't return the amount of sanction, but he returned one day and the expenses for that one day <laughs> by simply work. And that too, when he had to improvise, change the planning of his shooting because of unexpected torrential rain on one day. Those of you who have seen Shodgati have seen that outside the Brahmin's house, there is the Pratikuti Ravana around there, throughout. Through image, he makes comments, no written comments, but constantly seeing that image, you know the comment is. And originally climax was to be shot because it was scorching heat in September in shooting place, little about one hour from Raipur. And the planning was to do the climax in scorching heat, as if that effigy was burning, that Ravana was burning. But when we went to shoot something else at the Brahmin's house, suddenly the climate changed and what we saw night and day, so many clouds and it started pouring and when it grew, Manekda declared, stop, we are going to shoot climax. This flexibility of improvisation, though all this shooting has been meticulously designed by him, taking, he never left any chance of using nature as additional actor. And those who've seen the impact of climax, that dead body in torrential rain, Smita coming, crying, and the Brahmin dragging it in that rain. When you read Premchand's story, probably it doesn't come as viciously, but when you see it, and that's the reason I say that Manekda takes literature further to make it far more impactful by adding to it his own view. And as Dr. Lagu has said, that we actors are only coolies. We are used by writer and directors. Jo saman diya hua hai, wo pahunchana hai audience tak. Jaisa writer or director chahte hai. The title of Lago's autobiography is Laman the one who carries everything. And I fully agree because as an actor, if you think I have done good in Shodgati, I think the major credit goes to Manekda because I'm a director's actor. And I'm going to tell you three things. Uh, do we have time enough? May I ask? Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Uh, just to illustrate my point, uh, as I said, the literature 
in the script is also used very effectively. So the first clip I'm going to show you of, and the reason to choose that clip is because a lot of filmmakers have done films on the caste problem in India. Majority of them, but have colored it to show they have portrayed some character darker. So from the beginning, you know they're villains. Manaida doesn't do that. In this story, the culture is the villain. Humans are not villains. Because what is happening is all accepted by those who are living in that era. Dukhi has come to Kashiram Brahmin, ask him to find the auspicious day for the marriage of his daughter. He has asked Dukhi to do some household work till he finds time to come with him. So it's a kind of, uh, what do we call, Bolute uh, Dari. I don't know what is the English word. Uh, do you know, Raju? Uh, uh, barter system. It's a, it's a barter system. Barter, barter system. Huh? Very good. And it is accepted by both kind of thing. Karneko, right? There is some human concern also. And that's what I'm going to show you. So he has asked him to do that. He's finishing his course of Brahmin at his age, which is acceptable to Dukhi because he thinks after all, he is doing him a favor by coming to his house to find so he must do something. So the exploited and the exploiter, both have accepted this part of culture as a normal thing, routine. Nobody is villain and nobody is hero in this. Right? Now what happens at this point of time, when he comes in asking for some because he wants to smoke, by the, the wife asks husband, do you have asked him to cut the wood. Has he eaten something? There's a human concern. And he says, the Brahmin, probably not because he is here since morning. So how can you work on empty stomach? Now you'll see that dialogue. Now, toward the end of the film, the reference comes again to something, same eating. But now it is in different context. And what is that context? And that is where the human nature is. That is not where villain is because then all of us are villains and all of us are heroes. That is how it happens. So can we see this clip of uh, dialogue sure. between sure. Sure. and his wife in the beginning? Sure. Okay, now end of the same reference. All right. So what you see here is, it happens in our day-to-day -day life also. We make casual comments, but when it gets into serious situations, we say that our casual conversation was serious one 
and you didn't take notice of it. This is exactly what has happened. A blame game because a crisis. Now just imagine the situation. Premchand would not have written even the story because in that era, in that culture, if he had come and Brahmin did not ask him to chop the wood, but what other course he was doing, then probably he would have gone to his house, given him the auspicious day and come back. Problem arises because he dies in the house of a Brahmin. And when such crisis occurs, then the blame game starts. And this is exactly reflected in the dialogues, which are part of the literature, probably in the original story. But now, let's come to the directorial editions of Manikda. I'm going to show you a small clip. Uh, see, for these four roles, he had done the casting. But for all other roles, we were going to use local artists. Now there is a particular scene when Dukhi dies, the Brahmin goes to Chamar Vasti to tell them to come and take the dead body. Fully knowing that probably nobody is going to come to Brahmin's house to remove that dead body. So obviously, when he comes back, he doesn't want to meet anybody, doesn't want to say anything. His first encounter on way back is with a group of Brahmins. These were local artists. And the scene was very simple that they are all waiting for him to come back to know when the dead body will be removed. Manekda wasn't sure whether they would deliver their dialogues effectively. Fortunately, they did to a satisfying level. So he did not have to use what he was going. Now we're going to see the clip. Then he comes, that see little clip with the Brahmins. And then I will tell you what he had thought as a backup plan. Can you see that? Yeah. मैं उसके साथ उसके घर आने वाला था। वो अचानक मर गया। बात ऐसी है कि लाश कब तक पड़ेगी वहाँ? मैं जानती थी, मैं जानती थी, वो मेरे हाथ से भाग गई, मैं जानती थी मैं बोल गया, बोल गया, बोल गया, इसलिए से उठाने का कुछ बड़ा गंभीर मामला है पंडित जी जब तक मुर्दा वहां से नहीं हटे हम लोग उस रास्ते पानी लेने नहीं जा सकते आखिर पानी बिना कब तक चलेगा कैसे मैं अभी चमार बस्ती जाकर उनसे कहा आया हूं वो आते ही होंगे आप ऐसा कीजिए अपने अपने घर जाइए घंटे भर बाद फिर आइए जाइए This we will see later. This portion we will see later. Yeah. Now you have seen this group of five, six Brahmins coming. What Manikda thought of that as I come back to my house, you have seen the umbrella in my heart and the original weather climate was hot sun. 
So the idea was, I was under the umbrella by opening it. That time, this is not open because suddenly the weather changed, as you have seen in the shot itself. So we couldn't go there. And he had thought, while showing me walking back with the umbrella, as I come closer to the camera, I disappear from the frame and only the umbrella is seen. Then in the next frame, there is one umbrella and five, six umbrellas come into the frame from different directions. And all the dialogues which you have seen now are only heard without you actually seeing other Brahmins. Then in the last shot, all those umbrellas again disappear in the same directions in which they came. And the camera goes back to show I am under the umbrella walking into the house. Now, unfortunately, the weather changed, so we couldn't open the umbrellas. So we did that scene the way it was written. And fortunately, there was good cooperation from the local artist. So dialogue is given only to that one uh, Brahmin, as you see, which was actually split between three, four. But since he was a good actor, although dialogues were given to him and others were supporting to him. But what a brilliant conception of shooting it only on the umbrellas with sound coming not on face. And now the next clip, I'm entering the house. Now you know that I don't want to meet my wife because I have no face to show. I have not succeeded. So thing he would like to do is avoid his wife. Now, when I was planning a great deal about how I would prepare for the scene and show my disgust and my show my desire not to face my wife, how am I going to show that? What would be my improvisation? Manegda Kulli came and explained me the scene, which you will see now. What you will see, I'll tell you, and then you see, as I'm entering the house, from the dark I emerge, my wife is putting clothes to dry in the square. She walks towards me. I don't walk towards her. I exit the frame, go to left. First shot. I find the first door to come where I find a charpai, a bed, lie. In such situations, your back always has eyes. So he knows for sure, wife is not going to leave him like that. She's going to follow. She follows. The more, when he senses that she has come, he's lying flat and she bombards her first question. Normally we use in normal conversation when we don't see eye to eye, when we don't have a satisfying answer. What Manekda asked me to do, he asked me to just simply put your right arm over your eyes. That is the second shot. But she is the nagging wife. She further keeps on nagging asking him further question, which is even more irritating, but you can't show irritated. So Manekda asked me now, turn your back towards your wife and your face toward the wall. Right. Right. And don't, don't answer that question. And then she knows that he's not going to answer. Let's see the scene. And do you think in my place, anybody would have been there, you would have thought, what a beautiful acting. Shall we see that scene? No, no, further. 
when I come in the house. तो उस रास्ते पानी लेने नहीं जा सकते आखिर मैं वो आते ही होंगे क्या हुआ वो नहीं सुनते नहीं सुनते क्या मतलब वो लाश नहीं हटाएंगे तो क्या हम हटाएंगे वो सब मुझसे मत पूछो तुमने उनसे क्या कहा क्या जो कहना था वही कहा दुखी मर गया है तुम जाकर लाश उठा लाओ फिर फिर क्या उन्होंने मेरी सुनी ही नहीं उल्टे मुझे लाल लाल आग दिखाई फिर मैं वहां नहीं खड़ा रह सका बारिश हो रही है और अभी लाश यहीं पड़ी है सो वॉट यू सी इज द बॉडी लैंग्वेज नॉट द मुद्रा अभिनय बाय द एक्टर एंड मानिक द न्यू बॉडी लैंग्वेज सो गुड सो विद दिस सिंपल इंस्ट्रक्शन एंड आई मस्ट एडमिट दीज आर द इंस्ट्रक्शन विच केम फ्रॉम मानिक द what came from me is whatever little face you see okay that was mine but the impact which comes is because of the body language and the dialogue i think this is the magic of cinema which i learned from manik da and then that's what told me why he is way ahead there after whenever i have seen his other films i have imagined what must have happened at the time of shooting for me to know how instructions must have gone to the actors that time uh this is as far as my acting experience with him goes um i had one more point which uh, as usual i'm getting old probably forgetting Uh, but probably it will come when i answer some questions <coughs> that's why right. um uh is that the, i think the, we have done with the clips no yes okay. the clips are done if you have any more point to make mohan you can go ahead yeah when i if i remember probably in question answer the yeah, point okay. will come okay. but i think from my side okay i will rest here Okay. Is that okay? Oh yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. that was yeah. fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Uh there are a couple of questions already in the box. Uh there is somebody who is asking uh uh let's see. Sir, so how did you prepare for your role? When you work with Manik da when you work with a good director you don't rehearse too much because if that's not what you are supposed to do then it takes a long time to undo what you have practiced and the spontaneity of that is gone in fact during our shooting i found out another interesting thing that how manik da who for first few films had a wonderful cameraman who was known in his own capacity as a great cameraman eventually manik da became the operating cameraman though he never took the credit for camera and i asked him the answer was is very interesting i'll tell you he said suppose the shot is going and i am getting the performance i want and that shot is cut because of the technical reason maybe some light you said trolley has moved just jerk or anything i don't mind because in the next shot 
I may not get that performance. The way he differentiated between a living actor and a dead prop. And what was more important to him. So I think that right to say cut. Sometimes he wouldn't mind because even the performance was not. But if the performance and genuinely let me admit frankly sometimes in improvisations you suddenly get a performance which you may not be able to repeat. And there if that performance is very strong a technical matter whether what you now you wear you see those three dolls you know, if one doll is missing it does not harm what the director wants to show everything. And so that was very important for him. And so that is how he came to be an operating cameraman and he was always focused and you, he knew how to extract a performance and how not to get a stereotype or a mechanical performance from his actors. Actors, I mean, I have not seen, there are people and good directors who treat, who even pamper the actors. He never pampered the actor, but he never made him feel that he doesn't know his job. The way he treated his actor is something remarkable, all of us and everything. And that must have happened everywhere. Right. Okay, uh, uh, Mohan. Thing, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, there are more questions, of course. <laughs> sure. Other thing I wanted to share was he was not a good conversation, no gossip. Probably his own Adda with Bengali friends, he did. But when we went to collectors at dinner as the last day, he did. I found out, unlike my other two friends, Sham and Girish Karnat, who were excellent conversations on any subject. <laughs> Manekda never, never gossiped. Yeah. All right. Okay, okay Mohan, uh, Krishnendu Bose wants to ask you how much did Ray direct you and how much did he leave you to your interpretation? Uh, he did leave a lot to me. Because we did ask from the winning sir that you can tell us whatever you, we will give you. In fact, Om used to say, <clears throat> because he acted in all kinds of films. So, So, Om said, Kya nahi? Acting ki departmental store khol ke baithe hai. Jisko jaisa chahe, waisa <laughs> Right. <laughs> A very clever answer. Right. But, uh, with Manikda, we knew definitely that we can't have that attitude at all. Preparing is, you must, yes, yeah, script. I must tell you the story. On the second day when we came on time and we were getting into the car, uh, Om said, can you give me a minute? I'll, I've forgotten my script. And I told Mo, don't worry, I have the script, come with. And Manekda said, no, 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 no. Please go and get your script. That means he was, he had sent the script to every person giving different kind of instructions in his. Casting me took First day he explained to us, then he waited to see what we are doing on our own. So uh, if we were on the right track, he would not give us any instruction. He would right. If right. we were on the wrong track, then right in the beginning, he would make sure that we are on the right track. And once he made sure we are on the right track, not many suggestions came from him. If the suggestions came, like the way I said, but it was not because I was on the wrong track, but he had a better way of taking the scene. 
than what an actor could do. And that's what cinema is all about. I think. Right. So in terms of preparation, this is a big myth. You do have to prepare for a role in theater. I can understand. But in films, you have to be good in spontaneous improvisation. Unlike theater, you don't get 45 minutes to improvise and get into your role. No. You get just a few seconds. And when the camera is on, instantly. So it's called spontaneous improvisation. That's one major difference between acting on theater and acting in films. So he did not give instructions about acting as such, if you are on the right track. Movement and everything was part of scene shot designing, which he did. And that is his prerogative. Okay, there's another question asking, how long did you rehearse for this character? <laughs> I read script a couple of times. That's it. Because I realized first day, because if, as an actor, everybody of us has an habit now to do the scene yourself first before director sees it. And in on the first day only we realized that hum jo kuch acting ke mane karte hai, wo aisa design hi nahi hai shot ka. To humne kaha, kaya ko das rupay kharch karne ka, yeah, somebody else wants to know why did you take up this role? If he had offered you, if you wouldn't have taken, then I don't know how can I answer your question. <laughs> I already told you that when there are people who are willing to pay him, so that he would cast. So, okay. All right. So give you a nice answer. All right. For Om, me, Smita, and uh, Gita, uh, Siddharth's wife. For four of us, let me be very honest with you. It's like attending a production workshop where other times you have to pay through your nose these days. You attend a production workshop. He is teaching you, training you, and as an end result, he is doing some student production. Our attitude of going to Raipur, working with him, hum charon logo ki, was as if we are at, we are being trained in making of cinema and attending a production workshop. Thank God, we didn't have to pay. Instead, he paid us something. You spend on things which you like. Working with Manikda, you do even free. You don't do it for everyone. Okay, there are a couple of uh, uh, comments as well. Thank you so much, organizers. Dr. Agashe, one brilliant virtuoso on the maestro. We are truly lucky to have this experience. Uh, there is another comment uh, which says, I have no questions, but my compliments to a great master himself. Mohan Agashe, it was a wonderful talk. Uh, infinitely more educative than, uh, about Rai and the modest title of this talk suggested that also. And there is another comment which says, good evening, sir. How much freedom did you or other actors have in terms of changing, adding, deleting the written word in your dialogue? With Manekda and some directors, you don't dare to do that. Because he has done it so carefully. Ah, that any act of additional smartness could hit back like a boomerang to you. This is Premchan. Premchan ki kahani hai. 
you can't undermine. These days, some actors are doing this nonsense. I don't encourage that at all. They think they know more. No. I don't dare to change dialogues of people with whom I work. Not Manekda, not Sumitra Bhave. Definitely not. Shams style is different. Working. But we are not talking about that. He believes on improvisation, so it's a different case at different times. Okay. Uh, there is somebody else who wants to know, did you have any point of disagreement any po at uh, any stage during the shooting? With Manegda? Yeah. No. No. We are in the awe. Frankly, I was too young. First of all, he was too mature. He knew it. I, you don't pick up a point only for the sake of argument. No. Because when he told us what he wanted, then the way he told, I was convinced. So there was no question of uh, showing that you are. Many times I have seen in conferences, people ask questions only to demonstrate to others how clever they are. I'm not that type. So I don't do that. I didn't know. And um, one more thing which had come to my mind while I was talking is uh, later. I made one blunder, which I must admit, and very few people know it. I didn't put that later. Later, I didn't act in the film directed by him, but I did several scripts. And I'm very proud to show you this kurta, which I'm wearing today. This kurta is from the last script of Ray to be shot. Target was the script written by Manikda for Shondip, which unfortunately was shot last, right? And right in the first scene, I am wearing this kurta. So as my memento and everything, I've kept it from that time till today and wear it only on such occasions mm -hmm. where I have to pay my respect to the maestro. That is one. And Very good. The second thing That's I wanted wonderful. to share, if there's time, just one minute. Yeah, there's time. Go ahead. So eventually we became sort of good friends. Good friends, junior and master senior, very, very senior. I reached Kolkata on the day he finished the script on a doctor and his daughter. Do you remember the name Raman of that film, which was completed by Shondip? Um, no, I couldn't readily think of the name now. Um, anyway, it's on, Shomitra acts as a doctor, as a cardiologist. Is it Ganoshatru? No, 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 no. It was afterwards. He finds a man with a heart attack in the bush while traveling right. at the railway junction to stop. So he gets out of the car, takes the man to his house, sees how his daughter is nursing him and compares it with his relationship with his daughter. Right. So wonderful. I And that day he had completed the script when I reached and myself and Satish Alekar went to meet him. And he was very happy because script had come up very well. And he said, would you like to listen? So we were the first two listeners of that script based on a doctor cardiologist showing doctor patient and what a relationship problems and everything. And I was so taken by the script and I did a foolish thing, which I shouldn't have done with, not definitely with a person like Manegda. I said to him, Manegda, you should cast me in this film. I'm a doctor and I like this, I'm an actor. He didn't say anything. Obviously he didn't cast me. I forgot. I wanted to forget that instance altogether. But what surprised me the most, after about two months, I get a handwritten letter by Manikda, a three page letter calmly explaining me why he will, would not be able to cast me in that role, howsoever he respects me 
as an actor. I think, I mean, you don't get such experiences. You don't get such experiences. So then I didn't feel that bad that I asked him because he also had the courage to tell me why. Otherwise, I would have never known if I'm not. Nobody knows this. I have told you this story. I have that later and I'll show you. Thank you. Uh, Mohan Sudeshna Banerjee writes, wonderful to hear you speak, Dr. Ragashe. Remember the session with Shomikda in 2008 in Pune when you spoke about your experiences on working with Ray on Sadgati? It was later published. It was later published in Chitrabash, the journal that Jyoti Prakash Mitra edits for North Calcutta Films. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then, yeah, then of course, uh, uh, there are some more comments, but uh, I don't think there are any more questions in that sense. In the meantime, uh, Srimati Shupurna Sinha has named the film you were discussing, uh, which is Uttaran. Uttaran. It was yeah. made by Uttaran. Correct, correct. Uh, right, right, yes. Right. Uh, I, I, there... I, I think. I should still do it in Hindi. Yeah. It's such a fine film. There's another question which says, what similarities do you find in the filmmaking of Sumitra Bhaveji and Raiji? To be very honest, Anray, Sumitra came to filmmaking by accident. Till she was 40 years old, she was never even a film buff or anything. She came from Tata Institute of Social Sciences. She was a researcher, serious minded. <clears throat> and when she was working on the problem of women in urban slum, and the topic was survival and hurdles, adversaries and survival. This was an in, uh, what do you say? interventional research project. So they had to do something to empower the women. At the end of the research, she realized that hardly a or two women were able to read and write. So the conventional tools of communication in the educated, academically bright class, bar diagrams, graphs, and all those things which human beings don't understand, were out of question. But all these women used to see films. So it occurred to her, why not make a film to tell what she wanted to tell through otherwise research, social research. And that is why without knowing anything about making film, being ridiculed by everybody, with the help of Devu Devdhar, a cameraman, she made this short film called A Woman, Bali. Seeing which, NGO approached her to make a film on water problem of Adivasi women who had to walk 10 miles for drinking water. And that was the second film, Water. Both these films were invited to so many festivals. And she suddenly realized, my God, power of this medium is so good for non-formal education. So for first 10 years, she was making those kind of short films before she made Dohi. But we can have another session. Too. So her coming to film was accidental. Manekda was primarily an artist that to visual artists. So if you see the visuals, but the way she made up for what she did not know for 40 years is commendable. So if you see her journey as a filmmaker from Dogi till last film Dithi, you see a progress of Sumitra Bhave as a filmmaker. 
whereas in manekda if you see carefully manekda's last four films lot of film institute ardent academic students of filmmaking did not like much because there were no experiments in the making of it but in the statements he wanted to make both ganashotra ghore boyre uttaran change in manekda about film making from his earlier film to that film much more to talk but i am not a scholarly person like shomik banerji or many other film analysts but this is my perception of work but in terms of diligence working on the script taking due care of everything she used to write patakatha samvad dialogue screenplay direction art direction everything was done by sumitra like he did not music right right to, to see so many qualities in such high standard in one man the only other people who have realized power of cinema sumitra realized it for teaching manik the reality is as an art form and he fought for it that this is an art the only other category who realized power of cinema are politicians from tamil nadu <laughs> who use power of cinema to gain political power why why are you restricting it to only the politicians of tamil nadu uh, politicians no, no, from I, of I, all I, hues I all hues are uh, using that and it was way used way back by mr gerbels much much before anybody else did in a wonderful way you see uh, for to their own advantage yeah. <laughs> wonderful way indeed <laughs> okay so let's not get into that kind of discussion uh, so thank you very much uh, uh, dr mohan agashe for your wonderful scintillating talk uh, a first hand account and uh, very few people could have shared the kind of experiences that you have shared with the audience today so thank you very much for giving the time and for giving the thought and for making it so lucid and interesting and thank you all who have joined us uh, on the zoom call and also on facebook thank you for making this evening a worthwhile experience uh, till we have our next event goodbye from all of us here at the victoria memorial and on this call the way of appreciating dr agashe on a zoom call would be to do this this is a form of appreciation <laughs> yes i am doing it to you <laughs> okay. thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank, thank you. you everybody thank you good night, good night.